Good morning, everybody. Um, obviously here, uh, share some sad news. Uh, uh, released a statement uh, earlier today, the passing of uh, Oilers legend Dave Semenko um, after a short but courageous uh, battle with cancer. Um, we'd much rather not be here, but um, life is life and uh, have to move on. So uh, very fortunate to have um, some of Dave's uh, close friends and teammates here. Uh, we've got uh, Kevin Lowe, uh, Charlie Huddy, and Paul Coffey. And uh, each of those uh, gentlemen are going to come up and uh, say a few words. So I think what we'll allow is uh, for each of the guys to uh, reflect a little bit on uh, Dave and their friendship and then we can uh, go into some questions. So, uh, Koff is in from uh, Toronto. He's got to catch a plane at 1.30. Start with him. We'll go to Charlie next, and uh, Kevin uh, will be around uh, uh, third and, and after. So, thanks, everybody, for coming, and uh, I'm going to turn it over uh, to Paul for some comments. Kind of a kind of a tough day. We do know that. Um, you know, on behalf of the Oilers, you know, all the guys we chatted with today, Kevin was great reaching out to everybody. And trust me, everybody wishes they could be here. Um, they will be here next week. Um, give me one sec. <clears throat> Smink was a special guy. We know that. Um, you had the. The legacy that the early teams built in Edmonton, you know, you had the, you had the Waynes and the Marks and the Yaris and, and Grant and Kevin and, and Andy and guys like that. But, you know, Dave was, Dave was the guy that made it fun, uh, made it safe to go out and play with the big guys, go into the Philadelphias, go into the Islanders, play against the tough teams and, allowed myself and, and, and all the skilled players on that team to do what they did best. And, you know, he was great at it. Had a chance to uh, get in here yesterday, which was which I'm real happy I did. And as I mentioned earlier, the other guys would have if they could have, but it didn't work out. But, you know, his wit and his uh, his candor was, was with him right till the end. It's a tough day for us all. You know, we all found out a month or so ago and, you know, I had the pleasure of, you know, being with Dave and, and playing with Dave. And, you know, there wasn't a fight he didn't win. Unfortunately, this wasn't his fight to win. Um, it's a terrible disease. Uh, you know, he's the biggest guy I've seen taken down that fast. And that uh, that was sad. But, you know, he, he did it with dignity, surrounded by his daughter and, uh, and some girlfriends, a couple other girls in the room, but uh, that's that's kind of the way he would want it. And he was uh, just a real good guy. My first experience with Samank was in my first training camp in Jasper, Alberta in 1980. And, you know, being there as a young kid, a shy kid, an early draft pick, really trying to fit in. And we're all sitting outside the outside the restaurant, the bar area, and Samank says, do you want to make some friends? And I said, yeah. He says, why don't you buy everybody a round? And I said, no problem. So the beer came, and at the time it was Olympia beer, and it cost 50 bucks, which I was a little bit devastated. That was a lot of money. And Samank, like only he can, just looked at me and said, yeah, but look at all the friends you made. Bought everybody a beer. And that was my, uh, that was my induction to him, introduction to him, and, and just what a great guy he was, a great teammate. And... You know, the stories the stories go on and on, and a lot of them are going to come out, and all of us tell them in different ways, but he was just a very, very, very special guy. Uh, you know, for those of you in the media that have seen him walk around here in this last year and a half, two years with the Oilers, he's always been an Oiler. Scouted with them for years, but never, ever been happier than he's been the last year or so in the position he had with the team. You know, carried that flag with dignity, uh, Right to the end, and and you know was a was a was a fan favorite for a reason. Not because he was one of the toughest guys in his era, 
but just that he was very approachable and very reachable. And uh, again, just going to close and say he was, uh, you know, as good as Wayne was, Smank was the same in the dress room and a player on the ice, and he'll definitely be missed. Thanks. Morning. Well, tough day for everybody. Um, I was in Winnipeg at development camp, and guys called me last night and told me that um, Samake wasn't doing good. And unfortunately, I didn't didn't get here in time. But um, like Koff said, so many stories about Samake. I've been fortunate to have him as a teammate from. Uh, when I got here in the early 80s and, a, and a, obviously a real close friend and um, a neighbor that lived my first couple of years about 10 minutes away from uh, from where I was so I was uh, I was fortunate to drive him to the rink a few times here and there and drive him, drive him back home and, and things like that so we got to know each other pretty good and uh, like Koff said just a lot of great memories just a real witty guy and uh, you know the stories go on and on about uh, about Samank, about how good of a teammate he was, and made every made all of us safer on the ice when we were out there playing. Like Koff said, we didn't. I didn't see him lose. I don't think I saw him lose any fights. I mean, there was there was some tough guys back then, and he wasn't uh, he wasn't backing down, and uh, he was proud to do his job, and he uh, he did it with the best of them. One story. Well, there's probably more than one, but one one story that uh, that I remember is uh, when Cement got traded to uh, Toronto. I think me and Koff were still playing together, but um, I remember going back. Cement was on the ice. I remember going back for the puck, and I I knew he was coming, and I was expecting a big hit, and then all of a sudden I heard I heard him yell, "I'm coming! Look out!" And he just, I, I got the puck, and I probably skated as fast as I could. Cause, but he, I don't think he had any intentions to hit me. He was giving me a good heads up on it. But, uh, man, all the stories go on and on about him. And, man, he's going to be missed around here. You guys have had the experience of, of um, having him here at the games. And I was fortunate to come to, uh, to game six against Anaheim. And um, I was up in, in Daryl's box, and Samank was up there. And we were chatting for a while, and he was taking us around. We had to go to uh, to another box to um, to get introduced in between periods or whatever it was. And um, Samank's the only guy. He's the only guy walking around. He's got no no dog tags on, no nothing. Everybody else has got security things on, and they're they're tapping away. And I said to Samank, I go, everybody's got. He goes, no, no, no. I don't need those. I just go wherever I want. Nobody questions me. Nobody does anything. <laughs> he just. He pretty he pretty much owned the place. He just walked around and did whatever we want. And nobody nobody said anything to him. So it was uh, it was a great experience, and I, I I was fortunate to be able to to get some time with him. But um, again, just in closing, he's going to be going to be missed by all of us, and um, obviously by all the fans. Thanks, Charlie and Koff. Uh, I'll maybe just touch on uh, um, the recent uh, weeks or sort of the brief history of what, uh, what happened to Dave. Um, and there's, I think he would want this out there, knowing him like we do. There's probably a message in there for everyone. But uh, he, he, about three weeks ago, uh, he phoned my brother Kenny and, and said uh, he wasn't feeling well if he could organize an appointment with the doctor. And, and uh, I guess he had been not well for a couple weeks. But, um, you know, there was no record of any of his recent health because he hadn't been to a doctor in 15 years because I guess he had been the picture of health. So the, uh, the prognosis was not great, but... Uh, felt treatable at the time and uh, it was just a rapid uh, a rapid descent and you know passed away of cancer so for everybody out there listening you know get in and see your doctor 
because Dave would, that would be important to Dave. Uh, he, uh, I think it's safe to say that without overstating anything that the, you know, the greatest of all time are up in the building in Rogers, but uh, as Koff alluded to, th those greats couldn't have done without the uh, support and, um, and, and aid of Dave Semenko, and I say that with the you know, greatest deal of sincerity. Because what he provided on the ice, uh, the message he delivered to the opposition, and was a good hockey player, was capable, as he pointed out many times, he scored a bunch of points in junior and did have a hat trick in the NHL, was actually player of the week one week. Uh, but uh, it was really his presence in the dressing room and his, he, he really kept us all grounded. He had an incredible wit and uh, he reminded us often of who we are. And uh, not to sort of get, our, uh, not allow for our heads to get any bigger than they were. Um, I'll close with saying that, uh, you know, the Oilers uh, have been working with uh, Dave's family. And uh, so we'll have, uh, there'll be a service next week. We still don't have the details, but we'll get that out as soon as possible. We want to celebrate him and his legacy in life as best we can. And, um, you know, I'll just close by saying I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm devastated. Uh, he, he loved uh, what he did this past year. It was his first year that he wasn't scouting and he was an ambassador. I think the first ever Euler ambassador. And we had so many comments from our customers and our employees, how fortunate they were to work with him. And he was so happy, he was happy not traveling and he was really happy with the new building, the team and what he was doing. And he was really looking forward to the coming years. And I'm just, I'm, I'm shocked this all went down so quick and you know I, I'm gonna really miss him thanks <laughs>